New Zealand, across New Zealand, across government, are shifting to more risk-based regulation. So, as I was saying, speeding up the commercialization of new products across New Zealand is a key to a part of our BGA agenda. And regarding the more quality regulation I was talking about, the premise behind unnecessary, and to avoid unnecessary and more prescriptive rules and regulations, slow the economy down, slow development down, slow innovation down. But a risk-based approach allows users to put in place safety systems that work for them, whilst also maintaining flexibility for new developments, new technological developments. And better quality regulation doesn't just mean new or additional rules, laws, regulations, but the smart use of non-regulatory tools such as education also plays a vital role. For example, education is an essential tool to ensure commercial and recreational users of remotely controlled and piloted aircraft are aware of their safety responsibilities. I understand Graham mentioned earlier the Airshare website, a collaborative effort by UAVNZ, the Civil Aviation Authority, Callaghan Innovation, and of course, Airways Corp. I'll just touch on the government's approach to technology. And of course, we want to help New Zealand businesses, New Zealand organisations, lead the development of new technological advances. And one key way we can help promote the uptake of new technologies is to remove unnecessary regulatory barriers. But this government is committed to regulation flexible enough to accommodate the growing use of technologies such as remotely piloted aircraft. The United States Federation uh, Aviation Administration, the FAA's, their initial ban on all commercial use for remotely piloted aircraft stifled the US remote piloted aircraft industry. We have no desire to have any type of stifling effect here in New Zealand. But of course, the public have good and fair expectations of our aviation industry, of our sector in New Zealand. They have expectations around the regulation <coughs> of any and all aviation activities. The public, the public expect the government to provide a safe transport system with sufficient regulation to minimise risks. That means, among other things, aircraft must be fit for flight, aircraft staff well trained, and of course safety rules adhered to. But the public also wants an efficient aviation system with no unnecessary red tape that constrains growth, and innovation for no good reason, or unnecessarily increasing the cost of travel to them and to their businesses. And this is what government agencies need to keep in mind when regulating remotely controlled and piloted aircraft. In June 2014, the Intelligent Transport Systems Technology Action Plan was released. Bit of a mouthful, but that action plan outlines the government's approach to encouraging and enabling safer and more efficient transportation systems. It also includes a plan for the development of remotely piloted aircraft rules. I understand that Steve Moore from the CAA will be talking about these following me. But in that action plan, the government also notes its intention to build on New Zealand's reputation as a good, trusted, solid place for international companies to test new transportation technology. Kiwis, New Zealanders, we're well known for our appetite for developing and adapting new technology and our relatively small but well-educated population, flexible regulatory environment and diverse landscape and climate serve us very well on the global stage. <coughs> The government will be using all channels, all available channels, including our relationships with technology companies and developers, 
and our presence in international forum to promote New Zealand as a receptive test bed for new technologies. The Ministry of Transport is currently liaising with overseas companies to potentially trial autonomous or driverless vehicles in New Zealand roads, on New Zealand roads. That same action plan commits the government to review the current law to determine whether, whether any legislative changes need to be made for our transportation sector. Regarding, of course, remotely piloted aircraft in New Zealand, as I'm sure you all know, model aircraft have been flown remotely by hobbyists for many, many years around New Zealand. Model aircraft clubs, clubs and enthusiasts have generally taken a very, very responsible attitude to safety. In recent years, though, those same aircraft have undergone rapid technological advancements and the uses are growing all the time. And I understand that many of you here today are using many of those new types of aircraft for scientific research, agriculture, film and video production. Remotely piloted aircraft are opening up significant business opportunities in New Zealand and abroad. Many innovative small businesses across New Zealand, some of which I'm sure are here today, are making the most of these opportunities and challenges. The government, we encourage this and want to see the industry grow. However, we of course need to recognise that with growth comes safety risks for other aircraft, people, people and property. Most remotely piloted aircraft can fly faster, further and higher than traditional model aircraft. The number of aviation incidents in New Zealand involving remotely piloted aircraft has been increasing steadily since 2010. Overseas, some notable piloted aircraft, remotely piloted aircraft incidents and accidents have occurred. I understand Graham also mentioned the Heathrow Airport incident at the end of last year. In South Korea, the operator of a remotely piloted helicopter was recently killed by that same helicopter. The point being that same model has been demonstrated here in New Zealand. In April last year, a Western in Western Australia, a triathlete was hit by a remotely piloted aircraft supposedly filming the event and a rotor blade ended up embedded in her scalp. To manage safety risks, it is essential that users are aware that they are subject to civil aviation rules. And I encourage all of you to familiarise yourself with the rules and of course make sure your colleagues in this room and beyond know them and are aware of them and abide by them also. The International Civil Aviation Organisation is currently developing international guidance on how to structure a regulatory framework for remotely piloted aircraft. In the meantime, in New Zealand, we're committed to putting in place a flexible regulatory environment <coughs> and framework that enables and allows the industry to grow. The government will also work on how remotely piloted aircraft can safely operate in controlled airspace as part of the new Southern Sky <coughs> Initiative. The CAA is currently consulting on draft rules to accommodate remotely piloted aircraft in the aviation system. I really do encourage you to make the most of that consultation period, which ends on the 30th of January. The details how to submit and uh, what to submit on are available on the CAA website. I really do encourage you to have a look at that site and contribute if you can. Regulating the activity this activity is new ground for everybody. No one knows how the, work, the rules will actually work on the ground or in the air better than you, you, the users, the operators, the stakeholders. So I thank you for your contributions so far. I thank you for the contribution you're about to make to furthering the development of a flexible and safe regulatory environment for these vehicles across New Zealand. Thanks again for the opportunity to join with you today to listen to me uh, for a few moments to discuss, to share this incredibly exciting field 
uh, and new developments across New Zealand. Look forward to working with you in further development of a very exciting technology. Thanks very much. Take care.